I'm Motley Fools Canada Senior Analyst Nick Seipel, and this is the 5-Minute Major, here to make you a smarter investor in about five minutes. Today, we're discussing Canadian Natural Resources' fourth quarter and full year 2023 earnings results. My guest today is Motley Fool Canada Chief Investment Officer Ian Butler. Ian, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here, Nick. Fun to talk about Canada's best, I would say best, energy company. Canada's biggest energy company. We could argue it's Canada's best energy company. The market's certainly excited about Canadian natural resources. Today, shares surged about 5% following the earnings release on Thursday, making new all-time highs. Uh, the market liked, there's a lot to like about uh, CNQ's results, achieved multiple production records for the year, 7% production per share growth, did that while also increasing reserves for the company, net earnings of approximately $8.2 billion, adjusted funds flow of $15.3 billion, that led to over $7 billion in return to shareholders. Also, lots to be excited about on additional capital returns going forward. The company had said when they would achieve a net debt level of $10 billion or less, they were going to start returning 100% of free cash flow to shareholders. They announced today that that's, that's going to start here in 2024. Also announced a two-for-one stock split. Lots to like, both on the, the operating results and the, the capital allocation. Ian, what stood out to you about Canadian Natural Resources results? Yeah, I mean, all that, and, and we're throwing around a lot of numbers, but it really is a story that's told by numbers. Um, and, and the one that I think st stood out for me especially um, was CNQ's proved reserves of 32 years. They've got 32 years of energy equivalent in the ground. And if you add probable reserves to that total, it's up to 43 years. So a big struggle for all commodity producers are they're on a depleting asset base and they need to continue plowing money into the ground to find new reserves so that they continue in existence. And here CNQ is with 32 years of proved reserves, which essentially means they're, they're good to go. Um, so even if they don't find another barrel of oil equivalent uh, for the rest of their, for the rest of my investing timeline anyway, um, I, I think this company is going to keep pumping out the cash, pumping out big numbers like uh, you just went over. Yeah, great assets, great capital allocation, really a lot to like. Ian, when you look at shares today at all-time highs, as I mentioned before, how do you think about the valuation for Canadian natural resources stock? Are there more returns ahead for shareholders? Uh, I think absolutely. So for one, uh, I don't, energy prices aren't, uh, they're kind of normalized. I, I don't think they're too high. They're not too low. They're they're just right. So I think they're they're producing these numbers in a in a pretty normal environment for energy prices, which is where we need to start. Um, but then I think when we you mentioned that 100% of free cash flow is going to be going back to shareholders, can run through some numbers here. And um, I, I mean, they they generated about 3.8 billion in free cash flow in the fourth quarter. Um, let's round that down to 3 billion per quarter going forward, just to be conservative. Um, their existing dividend costs about a billion dollars per quarter. They bought back 1.5 billion dollars worth of sh uh, stock, so that's two and a half billion taken from that $3 billion run rate free cash of free cash flow, um, which leaves us another $500 million per quarter or 50 cents per share per quarter or $2 per share per year of extra money that is just going to be laying around um, that they're going to be uh, giving back to us, whether it be through dividend payments or um, for their share buybacks. And I think they'll be, they're pretty judicious about when they do buy back the stock. Um, so we're, we're, we're pleased Either way, I think we win either way with that formula. And and again, they they're they're going to keep uh, producing uh, at 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 the current rate for a long, long time and generating a lot of cash uh, over that time period. So I, I think there's absolutely a case to be made for just buying this thing and leaving it in a corner of your portfolio and letting it uh, kick out dividends. And 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 then if we get if we get a appreciating energy price environment, uh, it's just going to be that much more valuable. Yeah, I would not be surprised to see a special dividend with this extra capital return. We did see a special dividend of $1.50 back in 2022. One other thing to mention, we talked about energy prices, particular to Canada. We we should see realized energy prices for Canadian oil producers increase here in 2024. The Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion, which has been kicked around for a long time, expected to come online here in 2024. Improved offtake capacity available from the pipeline. We should see the discount that Western Canadian selects oil benchmark uh, that it that it has relative to the U.S. Uh, a benchmark that should fall. So over since 2010, that discount has averaged seventeen dollars uh, per barrel. It can expect this, according to analysts out there, to move closer to ten dollars a barrel. It's an extra seven dollars per barrel that should fall to Canadian natural resources bottom line, and again should juice returns to shareholders. So lots to like, and uh, I think this is a company you can keep holding happily. 
But that's all the time we've got for this edition of the 5-Minute Major. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Mulan.